This oatmeal was a controversial breakfast growing up. I adored it while my sister despised it. You see, the way my mom prepared it resulted in a texture that my sister didn't prefer. But it was that very texture, soft and eggy, that had me all heart eyes. I guess you'll just have to make it and decide for yourself who was right. As you can see, you'll only need a few simple ingredients. The classic way to make baked oatmeal is with rolled oats, aka old fashioned oats. But this can also be made with quick oats. The texture will be a little different, but still good. I would steer clear of steel cut oats though. By the way, this breakfast can be gluten-free if you purchase certified gluten-free oats. I personally like to use sprouted oats. You'll also need butter. You know me, I like to use grass-fed butter. Make sure to use salted butter for the best flavor. I don't recommend substituting coconut oil because the flavor that the butter lends to this is really important. You'll also need baking powder, salt, milk. Whole milk is ideal, but I'm sure you could substitute a low-fat milk or even a plant-based milk for a dairy-free option. But of course, you'll also have to substitute a dairy-free butter then. Maple syrup. I love to sweeten this with pure maple syrup, but you could also opt for brown sugar, sucanat, regular sugar, or another sweetener of choice. The original recipe calls for one full cup of sugar, but I usually just do one third cup. Eggs. The original recipe calls for two eggs, but I've increased this to four eggs for an extra protein boost, and it was still good. Vanilla extract. I like to use a little bit of pure vanilla extract for a flavor boost. I have not personally tried it, but I'm sure that almond extract would also be good. I personally don't add any cinnamon, but I'm sure that would be a lovely flavor as well. All right, begin by preheating your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius. Place a stick of butter in a glass square baking dish. 8x8 eight eight or 9x9 nine nine will both work. Now place the pan with the butter in the preheating oven to melt. Do not forget about it. Set a timer to remind yourself to check on it so it doesn't burn. I may speak from experience here. Meanwhile, mix together the dry ingredients in a large bowl with a wooden spoon. If you opted for a dry sweetener, you can mix it in with the oats. In a separate bowl, measure out the wet ingredients. Quick tip, mix all of the wet ingredients in a two cup measuring cup to save on dishes. Whisk the milk mixture together well with a fork. Make sure the eggs are well mixed. Pour the wet ingredients over the dry ingredients in the bowl. Stir everything together with the wooden spoon until very well combined. Don't be afraid to mix vigorously. Pour the oat mixture on top of the melted butter in the pan. Stir until the oatmeal mixture is almost completely combined with the butter, but not quite. You want to have a few pools of butter around the edges still. This is how you get that lovely, controversial, eggy texture. If you want to avoid that texture, you can make sure to mix until the butter is completely incorporated into the batter. Bake in the preheated oven for 25 to 30 minutes or until the edges turn deep golden brown and begin to get crispy. Another way to avoid the eggy texture is to make sure to bake this a little bit longer so that it completely dries out. I don't know why I'm telling you how to avoid this amazing texture. Allow it to cool for about five minutes before serving. There's there's no need to allow it to cool to room temperature. You want it to be quite warm, but not burn your mouth off hot. And here's a close up of the polarizing texture. This makes me swoon. Now my favorite way to serve this is with a generous glug of cream. But here are some other serving suggestions. Add fresh berries, chopped bananas, sliced peaches or pears, or other fresh fruit. If you like your baked oatmeal extra sweet, can't be me, you can drizzle some maple syrup or honey on top. Instead of cream, you could add a dollop of Greek yogurt for extra protein. A scoop of peanut butter or almond butter Butter would also be lovely. To turn this into a dessert, you could serve it with a scoop of ice cream and a drizzle of caramel sauce. Or you could add some chocolate chips to the batter to turn this into a breakfast treat that the whole family is sure to enjoy. Store any leftovers in an airtight container in the refrigerator for up to five days. To reheat, place the oatmeal in an oven safe dish. Pour some milk over the cold baked oats, then place in an oven set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 30 minutes or until heated through. I don't own a microwave, so I haven't tested it out, but I'm sure that you could reheat this in that as well. To save time in the morning, you can mix the dry ingredients together the night before and store in an airtight container. You could also whisk together the wet ingredients and store covered in the refrigerator. If your oven has the option to schedule when it will turn on, you could set it to start preheating about 10 minutes before you wake up. You can even place the butter in the pan in the oven the night before, and then it will be melted when you wake up. This is a dangerous game though. I once woke up to a pan of burnt butter when I miscalculated the timing. For a meal prep option, you could bake up a pan ahead of time, then divide it into individual portions for reheating throughout the week. 
All right, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and make sure to check out this video next that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Breakfast going already. Polarizing texture, texture. In store in an air kite, air kite, in an air kite, air kite, air kite container.